Hello everyone, this is Nork the Child here, and welcome back to another video. So today I thought I would address a topic that um, Eric Van Wilderman brought up about uh, another channel, Lost Pause, that's also been on my mind a little bit, uh, and this is about how YouTube is sort of um, flagging a bunch of videos, putting strikes on a bunch of people's channels for things that they deem as inappropriate content and how, you know, it isn't always the fairest thing and how it can be scary for big YouTubers, you know, because of their videos, um, to have them be taken down and it could permanently hurt their channel. So even though, um, I'm not one of those people who uploads visual novel games, um, who's, you know, worried about ha having, like, nudity or sexual scenes in their videos, um, like Eric Van Wilderman and Lost Paws, um, Although I did want to make a Honey Pop series, but then I realized that my grandparents and my parents both watch my videos, so that would not really be a good idea. <laughs> um, but th that's beside the point. The point is that um, even though I can't really relate to that that aspect of the you know sexuality of videos and you know the the censorship and how YouTube uh, may flag video. Uh, Eric Van Wilderman also did talk about um, the fact about the um, music strikes on his Geometry Dash videos. And I'm sort of facing a similar problem. Uh, I don't monetize my videos yet. I probably will start very soon. But um, I'm sort of having the same problem with Geometry Dash. And the songs in the videos for Geometry Dash. I've been getting a bunch of emails because um, networks that have partnered with the music creators um, only recently I've been getting a bunch of emails saying that um, a copyright claim was made on your video um, the song claimed by and I think the most common uh, social network is Dream Crusher Media and that has a bunch of like DJ VI songs and DJ Street and songs and stuff like that from Geometry Dash. And even though I'm not monetizing, so it's a bit less of a risk for me, it is kind of scary as a YouTuber. I'm not as big of a YouTuber as Eric Van Wilderman or Lost Paws. I only have 15,000, uh, almost, almost 16,000, uh, almost, sort of almost 16,000 subscribers. So I'm not that big and I don't make money yet. So there is less of a risk for me, but I can really, I really feel empathy, and I really understand the feelings that are coming from these bigger YouTubers, because some of them, this is their job, some of them, they're just doing it for a hobby, but the people whose sole job it is, and how if they can make one mistake and YouTube is hasty in their, um, in their, uh, strike or in their flag it can make the youtuber basically lose their job they'll lose all they'll lose it all their channel will be terminated in the most extreme case and they'll lose it all and that can be so scary knowing that you know um i messed up i made one video that could um have sexual content that used a song that you know um was claimed and I got a strike and you can just lose your whole job and that really is scary and for people like me I don't know if I'm going to pursue YouTube as a job when I'm older but if I did that would just really be a big fear to me and even if you know you abide by the the terms of service pretty pretty strictly you can still have one mistake and YouTube will just snatch you there. And unlike in real life, where you're innocent until proven guilty, on YouTube, you're basically guilty until proven innocent, which I really don't think is a good way that it works because YouTube will just, if there's enough flags on a video or if they find something themselves, they'll just take the video down, uh, give you a strike, terminate your channel for a little bit, stuff like that, and won't really connect with you. If you try to get some help from YouTube, it's really hard to contact them, and really hard to have a human help you out with your situation. And 
I feel like YouTube, now that it's grown so big, they don't really know how to handle everything that's happened. There's so many content creators, so many videos, over like, if you, if one person were to watch all the videos on YouTube, it would easily take over like 15,000, 20,000 years straight. So all that content, it's so hard to monitor at all, and I feel like they're getting a little lazy. It's, you know, as Eric Van Wilderman was saying, um, uh, viewers will flag the video if they see a video has enough flags. They won't even look at it, they'll just see oh, enough people have flagged this, will just, um, you know, take this down, um, or, you know, do something to the channel. And I feel like that's not good at all. That really is not good at all. It's definitely, um... It's definitely a common thing among big corporations that they tend to get a little more lazy and they tend to, you know, um, freak out when so many people are using their product or um, on their platform. And I feel like this is like a message to YouTube. I feel like YouTube needs to have more people in the field of, you know, copyright strikes and uh, content and how... Um, you know, not enough sexual, not, not, what am I trying to say, uh, not, um, there shouldn't be a lot of sexual content, um, and I feel like there should be more people in that field of investigating these videos and making sure that, um, you know, it isn't just taken down if there are enough flags in the video. For all, for all I know, I could make 10, 20 different accounts and flag a perfectly good video, just because I don't like the YouTuber, they'll have done nothing wrong, but if they see enough flags on a video, they may, like, just not investigate it and just take it down. There's nothing wrong with it. So I feel like that system is also sort of flawed. But YouTube should really put a lot more effort into the way they monitor everything that's going on. It'll definitely be a better community if that happens, because... Another thing, it may also affect YouTube, their laziness will come back to haunt them. Because if they take down a channel that hundreds of thousands of people love, or millions of people love, because of one little mistake, that's impacting all those people's lives. And that'll also have them, uh, have YouTube less traffic on their whole platform, just because, you know, like a million people who watched one channel will not be able to watch that channel anymore and they'll get less traffic on their platform. So that's one other thing that's a little, um, I don't know how big that would be. I'm just sort of speculating about that. But I feel like the responsibility really falls into YouTube's hands. There is responsibility that falls into the creator, how, you know, maybe they shouldn't be using the music that they, um, that isn't theirs, they shouldn't be having sexual content, but if you're abiding by the terms of service pretty well, and if you're abiding by the, um, the agreements and all that, and your videos are, for the most part, fine, then I feel like there's nothing to be held against the creators, and YouTube should really be the ones buckling down and trying to fix uh, all of this, because it's hurting the content creators, it's hurting the viewers, and it can, in turn, hurt themselves. So, guys, that was just a little bit of my thoughts on this um, this issue. It doesn't really affect me, but it potentially could in, you know, a few years' time, when I start monetizing soon, something like that, um, and it definitely... Um, is going to uh, affect big channels with these problems, and I feel like it should be addressed very soon before YouTube can just crumble in front of our very eyes. So, thank you for listening to my almost 10-minute video um, and my opinions, and yeah, I just hope everyone can have a safe experience on YouTube. Alright guys, see you later, goodbye.